new generic cognitive model includes focusing. Yeah. Um, does that uh, imply a change in treatment for these patients, or have we always focused on focus without labeling it so so well, explicitly? I, I think it's, it's an advance in the sense that it's refining it and springing up front and center. So probably in past years I did do some refocusing techniques, but now we're saying this is central. It isn't a peripheral thing that uh, you just play with. It's, it's something you should use. And there's like things with adolescents, and certainly since it's an adolescent workshop, mm -hmm. where the refocusing would be of advantage. I think so. We, we've been talking about that this way these two days, that essentially people n naturally pay attention to the information in this situation that supports the belief they have and filter out the rest, and that part of our role here is, as therapists is to pay attention to what the person is focusing on and help shift focus to the information, the sort of broaden the lens of what they're looking at and shift to paying attention to some of the disconfirming information. That's, that's the broadening the bias. Right. So uh, is anybody, uh, people here aware of the concept of an attention bias? An attention bias simply means that you don't pay attention to other things in the peripheral field. You may see it, but you don't, you don't see it. You don't pay attention. How many are familiar with the, uh, uh, with the study of the gorilla at the basketball game? Not, not, every, not everybody. Okay, so very briefly, uh, there were uh, videotapes made of a very close basketball game. And um, there also was a, in, in the scenery, there was also a gorilla. A gorilla is sitting there in the bleachers while the basketball game is going on. And so they showed this to a group of men and women, by the way. And for the most part, the men never saw the gorilla. They were so focused on the basketball game that when they were asked afterwards what, what else was in the picture, they did not see the gorilla. The women we're more likely to see the gorilla because they were more broadly focused, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> so, can um, can there be too much of a good thing? Yeah. Can people rely too much on refocusing uh, to to uh, try to decrease negative emotion, and then not learn that negative emotion is not harmful? Right. No. Uh, I mean, uh, you're absolutely right. Could you give us an example of... So I'm thinking of, uh, of a patient who was constantly distracting herself every time she got anxious. So uh, she'd start thinking about some catastrophe that would, would happen, and then she'd, um, she'd deliberately try to refocus her attention on something yeah. else because she had the belief, if I allow myself to focus on this catastrophe, I'll get more and more anxious until yeah. I fall apart. You're absolutely right. So the refocusing in cases like that, not necessarily in every case, depends right. upon the problem. Exactly. Uh, in cases like that, uh, it's absolutely true. So the refocusing would be an ad hoc type of thing. So somebody has, well, one of the things I used with people who had, say, uh, subway phobias, and they couldn't get to work, uh, and they had to take a taxi cab, say. So I would say to them, well, when you, when you go on the subway train, you start to feel a bit anxious. Look at the advertisements just under the ceiling and focus on each advertisement and read them to yourself. But that was just an ad hoc, so he could get to work and pay the bill. Wouldn't have to take taxis all the time. But then eventually, we had to get to exactly what you said, which is their fear of anxiety. And the fear that if they have anxiety and it builds up, so sometimes we would even try to generate the anxiety, have them image the worst possible thing that would happen, image the catastrophe. So one of the techniques, and uh, well, one what well, kind of a general technique is exposure therapy. You try to expose the person to exactly what they're afraid of, with the idea that uh, they'll be able to work it through. Much better to make it explicit, and to say you are afraid that uh, if you have too much anxiety, you're going to go crazy, and so on. And so it goes back to the importance of the case conceptualization for the individual client. Right. That's good.